For this project, I'll be using McCall Patterns 7660 View B. My fabric is a gray ponty knit fabric. I have the coordinating thread. I'm going to be using probably around 80 eyelets and they come in a 100 count package. And since I couldn't find the jump rings that I wanted, I found this necklace um, in the jewelry making section of Joanne. It's by a brand called Hildy and Joy. And it's probably about 42 rings in here in this length necklace. And they measure to about 20 millimeters. So if you can find jump rings, great. Go with the jump rings, but I'm just going to separate my necklace. And I bought two packs of these. The major modification to this pattern will be to the sleeve. So instead of cutting into my sleeve pattern piece, I'm just going to go ahead and trace around it. And now using the perforated line, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Okay, and since we know that sleeves and arms are not symmetrical, we are going to follow this dot right here, and we're going to draw a line down, and that's how we're going to create a split sleeve. If you notice, the back side, which is indicated by the two notches, is wider than the front side. So we're just going to go ahead and slice that one right through that line. And I'm going to put back and front just so I'll know. Now that we got all of the sleeve pieces cut out, this is the front and this is the back. I'm going to go ahead and fold the edges in first, one quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to fold them in three eighths of an inch. And that will give you your five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And once they're folded in, I'm going to go ahead and just edge stitch that down. Okay, now that I have folded over a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that right there as close as possible to the edge. And I like to use my blind hem foot and use a metal centerpiece right there at the bottom as a guide. And um, for this, I will probably set my stitch length to about three millimeters. I'm going to take a couple of stitches and then I'm going to back tack and I'm going to do the other side now that both sides are finished I'm going to line the front piece with the back piece and I'm just going to kind of attach them together using my regular sewing foot and just kind of zigzag across there along the seam, the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance because this is the top of the sleeve head just to hold the pieces together so that we can set the sleeve. we're going to go ahead and set the sleeve into the top. I like to set my sleeves while sewing knits flat. So just make sure that you're matching up all of your notches and the markings 
and match the center of the sleeve with the seam with the shoulder seam and also the more pins you use the less likely you will have puckering okay i've sewn the sleeve and i finish it off with my serger now let's go ahead and sew the sleeve seam and the side of the bodice make sure you're matching your notches you're matching your seam lines and the other notch on the other side okay this is what the inside of the sleeve and the side seam looks like so that's done and there's the opening and I press the seams towards the back Now the directions would normally have you sew the cuff like this where you would join the sides together, stitch across here, and then come back and make a tube out of it and you know, fold that in half like that. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to leave it open so that it will match the sleeve. So. Instead, we're going to turn it up like this with right sides together, and I'm going to stitch five eighths seam allowances on each side. Okay, I've stitched both sides with a five eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to trim a little bit of that off, probably down to about three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to flip this to the right side. And I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and baste across the top and give it a good pressing and then I'll show you how to attach it to the sleeve. The cuff is now pinned to the end of the sleeve and I'm just going to stitch it across. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and make our markings so that we can make the holes for our eyelids. I'm using a buttonhole gauge. You can just use a ruler as long as you evenly space them apart. And however many you place, that's pretty much up to you. But uh, this is the way I'm doing mine. So I'm just going to make um, markings on both sides of the sleeve where I want mine to go. And then we do the other side the same way. And you want to make sure that they're even because it would be like buttoning a shirt with uneven buttons and buttonholes. To make my holes, I'm using my Dritz 24P tool. Uh, I think this is used to make um, snaps, but I just like using the hole punching attachment. And you can make a hole with whatever you have that will work.
and get ready to put my eyelets in. And I am using the little tool that comes in the eyelet kit. And since sometimes eyelets kind of um, pull away from the fabric, especially using like a knit fabric like this, uh, sometimes the fabric grows. And to ensure that my eyelets stay in, I'm using just a little bit of glue. And I'm going to just dot that onto the hole. Not a lot because I don't want to get it on my hands and I don't want to make a mess with it. And so we're going to just stick the eyelet through the right side of the fabric. And we're going to turn that over and place the right side of the eyelet onto the little grooves in the base. And we're going to use the tool and put the tool down on it. And I like to use a rubber mallet only because it's less noisy and um, I just like using it. Give that a couple of taps and it's in there. And we're going to repeat this process all the way up and then start on the other side. Okay, so now I have all of my eyelets installed on both sides, and now we're going to put our rings in. You can buy jump rings in different sizes in the jewelry making section of stores like Joanne, Michaels, and Hobby Lobby, and you can probably buy them at a lot of different sites online. But since I was in a hurry and I was already in Joanne's, I didn't find uh, jump rings the size that I wanted, so I decided to buy this link chain also in the jewelry making section, and all of the rings are about 20 millimeters, so I just took my needle, two, well, two sets of um, needle nose pliers, and I just separated them and took them apart, and this is what they look like when they're all separate. So we're going to take the rings and we're just going to feed them through like this and use the needle nose pliers, one on each side, and just close them back up. If you've ever had to repair like a necklace or whatever, it's basically the same thing. And that one's in. And just make sure you get it closed so it won't slip back out. And we are going to repeat this step all the way down. Okay, so I finished all of the eyelets and added the rings. And I ended up adding a lot more than I had planned on adding because um, I was adding them at about almost two inches apart and that looked like there was too much gaping in the middle. So I went back and added more. So right now they're probably about, I want, I want to say maybe about three quarters of an inch apart. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks super cool and it's really different. It's not something you're going to see, you know, everywhere at like um, the H&M or the Forever 21s. And um, I think it just gives it a really cool look 
and um, just a different way to kind of step your sweater sweatshirt game up. So I hope you have enjoyed this quick little modification to McCall Pattern 7660. Thanks so much for watching.